Hey YouTube, my speakers arrived. These are the Atom T5V speakers. Uh, when I went to Guitar Center, these were the speakers that the guy I was talking to recommended, but then they only had one in stock, and that's the moment when I learned that uh, they sell these speakers separately, usually, and so the price was per each. So I was not going to be spending $200 on a pair. I was going to be spending closer to like $400. I think these were like three fifty or so. Yeah, but I'm kind of glad that I have these. I, originally, I got some uh, JBL speakers, the 305P, but I decided I wanted to return these or those and get these ones instead because I found some online that were a customer return. And I felt comfortable with that because I wanted to get something new. And a customer return is basically new, like they opened the box, maybe they tried them out and didn't really like them, and so they sent them back within 14 days, maybe a little bit longer depending on what the return policy is. But yes, the thing that makes these unique is they have a ribbon tweeter, as opposed to um, like either a cone or a dome tweeter. There's a bunch of different kinds, but the most important thing differentiation is the ribbon tweeter inside there is literally a ribbon where most common tweeters look like the woofer that's beneath the tweeter, the big circle. I don't know what type is the most common tweeter, I'm not a speaker expert, I probably said something that's not entirely accurate here, but the ribbon tweeter supposedly will sound better over time. Whereas, like, with normal tweeters, you can break them in, but they don't just keep sounding better over time. Uh, reading some stuff online, though, this is what I find interesting. Uh, a few things that I have read said that ribbon tweeters aren't as good at reproducing the mid-range sounds. So that got me then curious, what has Adam Audio done about mid-range? Because these sounded good inside Guitar Center, and keep in mind that, uh, one, these were one of the few speakers actually working in their test section, the others were a little beat up. And two, there's like other noise and stuff going on in there, so it's not a complete silent testing situation. And, hmm, so what have they done for the mids? Because they sounded good. Well, apparently it's just a two-way system versus a three-way system, which that means how many different speaker things diaphragms you have for making sound. So a two-way system, which this one is, it's got the tweeter and the woofer. Three-way, you have the tweeter, you have a mid-range, and then you have the woofer. They sound fine, so maybe just not being as good at mid-range is a nitpicky, only super audiophiles will hear it kind of a thing. I'm not trying to say it's any kind of a snake oil or garbage or whatever, I'm just saying that maybe a lot of people won't, maybe I won't notice it. It could very well be that way, but I do have those speakers, and I'm going to be building some stands for them, so I thought I would try and make a little video on these. Stands are going to have to go in that space there, and also that space back there. I've tried to look for pre-made stands that would work. Um, they're either not tall enough, or uh, I found some that would get tall enough and the base would fit in the space, but these are 12 pound speakers and those only held up to 10 pounds. So yeah, I'm basically going to be building some out of PVC, um, which is going to be an interesting journey. And I'm going to, you know, have to have my speakers tilted down just a little bit because they're going to be above these two monitors and I'm going to have them equal height. I'm going to try and have it be as nice as I can, but I think, you know, the space there to there is close to equidistant for the the triangle thing that I've read online for sound. But yeah, let's go along this journey as I build some stands. Also, the nice thing too is I was gonna have to move my UPS battery somewhere else on a lot of my cable management, which the plugs are right there. But if I have a PVC structure that's hollow, then I can, you know, have this still down there and it will fit around it. So that's gonna be nice. One stand, I don't know if I wanna have this just be uh, a U shape with the opening towards us or away from us. So, like only coming like this, or if I want to make this stand fit the whole thing. And it's kind of like, but is that going to be then unfair for this stand, which has to be a little smaller? I could scoot the desk over to even things out, but then I can't have the stand fit within the inch or so space on either side of my UPS. So those are some things to consider. A few other ideas I looked into is I thought like 
this could get me part of the way to the height I need if I bought a few more things like these. And I may have done that if they had some at Savers. And then for structural support, could have filled it with something. First idea was concrete. That would be heavy. It would be artsy, but heavy. Then what about great stuff? Insulation, foam. Not going that route. Uh, there was also... Uh, a it was either this, yeah, wooden CD tower. That would have been exactly the right height. But it was like $250, no, $209 or something. Yeah, when it's like $150 for two actual designed speaker stands, I don't want to, I don't want to pay that much for it. So those are kind of the things to consider. I'm just taking some measurements and writing things down. And then off to the hardware store to buy the PVC fittings. Alright, so, these are the pieces that we picked up at the hardware store, except for that. We'll that in a moment. And also, this is going to be cut up to make our top, plus a lip that can potentially help hold the foam on, as well as the speakers. But, uh, we might not even need that uh, lip, because these are actually going to be uh, flat. Originally, I was going to have them tilted a bit, because my ears would not be level with the tweeters, which is ideal speaker setup, what I read online, because they're going to be above the monitors. But, check this out. These are the uh, ultimate isolators. So they isolate your speakers from vibrating other surfaces and things and making noise travel through your floors and walls. Take a look at this. Our tilt is built into the isolators. They also let you get a different angle of tilt, so a little bit less. You have um, 8 and 4, so this is 8 degrees, and this is 4 degrees. It's so weird, this, if we, that, and that, is that, am I reading that? Yeah, that's 8 degrees down, so I've got, you know, two options for what I need, and then of course if I put these backwards, they would be the other way, and then back to flat. So, it's nice that that's built into this. I can just do it with this. Now, the rest of our fittings here, uh, this is most likely not everything that we need, although I may try a setup without the middle pieces. So the plan was to have the height split in two, and then, so this is the base, these are for the top. And then I need a four-way fitting, which essentially just adds another connector onto the bottom here. And then I can have a frame in the middle for extra support. I still want to go for the middle frame, so I'm looking at ordering some four-way fittings online because they don't make them locally. And I'm probably going to get them from Amazon, even though I don't like the way that Amazon's been treating their employees, and I'm really hoping that that changes. Amazon is going to have the fastest shipping, and I do want to start using my stuff, my speakers. So, uh, that's where we are right now, just comes to a bunch of measuring and cutting. So, there's been a slight change of plan. So, um, we needed some more pieces from the hardware store because we forgot and only got enough pieces for one. The other pieces are in that bag. We also needed some four-way pieces, which is essentially this piece right here, but it has a connector on the bottom right there. They don't sell those locally, so I had to look around online because no stores locally had them, even specific plumbing supply stores and whatnot. And uh, I found some that were red, and so that got me curious, and I found there is, doing some research, after I had bought the more pieces we needed, I found there are some red ones, and <clears throat> I decided to go with all red, because I'm going to have lots of red sound foam, and I like red, red stuff, red in my studio. So that piece is the only piece that we're going to be keeping from the hardware store. Uh, originally, it was going to be approximately 86.52. But now we're looking at 173.23, which actually isn't too bad, and that's including that board in both prices. That's not too bad, because some specific studio monitor stands that I had bought to see if they would fit in my space, but they don't, those are 150 for the pair. So, and these are going to be uh, a lot taller than they are. Not quite twice as tall, like maybe 10 inches taller, they're about like 36 inches tall, and I'm going for about 46 inches on these so yeah um it's gonna be all red pvc and i'm really excited for the look we'll be here about the 13th and today's the 6th so 
Uh, that'll be just next Monday, one week, and then we'll be able to assemble this thing together, hopefully. Yay! Alright. These are going back to the hardware store. Alright, here is our box, and... I am... I don't know, maybe a foot taller than it. Which actually makes sense, because these are... Four? I forget how long these are. They're 40 inches. Divide that by 12. I'm not good at head math for that. Let's open up this red PVC. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh. First thing I see is this. This is a very beautiful red. Uh, hmm. Appears to be a bit of uh, dust in the tube, but that's okay. And then we have we have our other stuff here. Let's see. These are the uh, middle T pieces, or not T pieces. Sorry, the this piece. Let's go ahead and I'll just pick one out. So yeah, these things. These make the uh, the middle section. Now this is furniture grade PVC, which I'd be slightly curious what that like means. And it's probably not rated for any kind of pressure. So like the regular white PVC that I was first considering using. We have like 200 PSI, 400 PSI. Here, here we have some of the bottom corner pieces. So, yeah, like that. And then finally, Maybe I should. Oh. Alright, let's see. I'm just gonna get this upside down. Padding on one side, and these are our uh, caps on the top. So now is the point of just measuring and cutting. Woohoo! So I just did a test fit of the bottom corner pieces around my UPS. There wasn't initially enough room, so I did just scoot my desk and everything over just like half an inch or so. So they fit now. Woohoo! All right, here's my mom doing some measuring and some math. So perfect. So my mom's marking them. They're gonna be maybe three inches shorter than we planned, a little bit less than that. But that's okay because the board that we're putting on top plus the isolation foam should make things tall enough. If it's one inch too short, that'll be okay because the woofer won't be hidden behind my monitors. And then if we really need to, we can just add another board on top. And hmm, for some reason my camera was yeah, it's tracking. Must think that's a face. No, I'm sorry, that's not a face. Anyways, that's where we're at so far. Yeah. It's a very nice, clean... It's not perfect for some reason, but that's okay. So, these are the stands. This one is the right one over there I'm just about to do a final test fit on. These pieces haven't been pushed on all the way yet, but it looks good. I like it. That one, I did try and test. It's a little bit too wide. I'm gonna see if the desk can go that way a little bit. 
and then I'm gonna see how much I'd have to push everything that way and if I like it because I do need the TV at a slight angle but um, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and do that so this stand <clears throat> is not fitting in that space and I've already moved this over some that way <sighs> so this is a test fit to see if it fits around the UPS and it does fit around the UPS we've got like a whole inch also, for some reason, I cannot remember which dimension it is, but I think it's like this side seems a little longer than that side, but I pulled the pipes out and checked them and they are even. So I don't know, maybe it's just how the angles of everything are in there, but we'll measure this for cut and figure out what to do next. All right, so the right stand fits now. Uh, we shortened it by an inch and a half going this way. I did have to move the desk over that way just like a quarter of an inch or so, and it fits. And we don't have the tops done yet, but I put the bottom in place because it will be easy to assemble the top just pushing straight downwards. I'm not gluing these together in case I need to take them apart, unless of course I find that like they seem to be wanting to come apart on their own, then I will consider some glue. But yeah, I'm able to, I was able to nicely cable manage everything back there, and that's part of the reason that I put the bottom in there now, and then, instead of waiting, that way I can have my computer plugged in and working again. Now, for this other side over here, where the cutting board used to be with the sun speaker, which I didn't plug back the white cable, because that was just for my sun speaker from the other side, but as you can kind of see, there are a whole bunch of cables down there that would have to be undone because they can't be under the stand. They need to be kind of inside the middle of it like the other one was. But then I realized something really cool. So I took the bottom off of this stand. I'll be able to lift those cables up just reaching back there, set this underneath them, place them back on top, and then the stand can just go straight down and, you know, a little downward force and it will fit. So all that's left to do is build the platforms on the top and we'll be good to go. These stands are done and they are looking pretty good. Um, yeah, I'm liking them. You don't really see them back there, but the extra red poking out was good. The rest of my studio is going to be red. I did a little tricky bit of work with the rat's nest of cables down there, but I got them pulled through and around quite nicely. And um, these stands are uh, relatively level this one's a little bit to one side but still within center and this way is just good and like if it's off by a smidge then that will be fine so yeah I am really liking them and this one is one that you can see how the aesthetic works I still need to plug that white cable in through the middle but it looks nice. Let's go ahead and put some speakers on.
All right. So we're looking at the rat's nest of cables that I hope to have better organized and figured out what goes where when I am done with setting up these speakers and everything. So currently we have a Nokia charger that's a micro USB pre-wired. I just use it for the few things that I have that need to be charged by a micro USB. The middle two plugs are the speakers and that end one there is for the light. So what I want to do is I'm going to put for now the two speakers on that clear blue Belkin uh, surge strip that I got from BYU Surplus oh, easily seven years ago, maybe a little bit longer. Uh, and I just bought it because it was clear and I like clear things. The cord looks like candy. So, and it sticks forward just enough that I can reach down there and turn the speakers off and on. Uh, if the light, if it had a light in there, well, it's not working, but that's okay. And then uh, that will just leave the Nokia brick and that switch for my light on this here. I would like to, I'm going to actually need to find something different, a very small, like a two foot power cord, where I can then bring the switch forward more easily and have it right under here. And, and that stuff will be moved out of the way for it to fit so I can easily turn the light off and on and then this can be plugged into the wall. I don't think I have anything to do that yet. The other thing too is, well, you've only got two speakers and you've only got two things that need to plug into your surge strip. Out <clears throat> extra and it's got four slots. So why don't you just plug everything into the little surge strip because it's going to be the switch for my speakers. They do have switches on the back but I can't reach back there and turn those off and on. That's been annoying enough when I used them a little bit, when they were just down here on the ground. So, yeah, um, no, I'm not doing that. Also, they need to be off when I'm not using them, because apparently I read online that capacitors will dry out. And they also need to be off when I'm powering this thing on. Uh, the Focusrite recommends you have them turned off when you power on your Bowcaster 2, otherwise you might damage them. I did have them on like once, maybe twice, when I turned this on, and they got a little pop sent to them. I can see why they might get damaged. I don't have my volume is very low, so I don't think I damaged them, but I am going to have them off when this thing is being powered on, and then I'll turn them on after that. So that's where we're at so far. I'm just going to see what kind of cable-y things I have around the house, and if I have some stuff to do this, if not, then I will buy a few things, but this gray one's going, and that one, I'll see if I can shorten this to just a two-plug thing. So cool. So, I can order a two-foot extension cord. I can also order it in red. That's good, because I like red. And uh, they don't make uh, power surge protectors or power cords that have a switch, but only have two plugs on them. Except for there's one that a lot of people really like for travel, like at an airport, if you're ever fighting over a power plug with somebody, you can just plug that one in and share the outlet, but it's too short, won't work for this. So basically I'm going to set up the speakers and be pretty much done, except for I am going to order a short power cord that's two foot for mounting my uh, light switch. So yeah, set up this other speaker. Alright, uh, so my desk might still look slightly messy, but it's just got several things on it. It's not a minimalist desk. And everything is in a nice, neat, and orderly place. And I'm happy about that. Flip you around. Um, so that is looking good. The only thing to do with cable management is this will go in back and come under to the mic when I get another one of those, because I only have one and I need to be able to unplug it if I need to use my mic with my zoom anywhere else. But the main thing of this video is the speakers and woohoo. They look really good. The one on the right is half an inch taller, so I may uh, 
disassemble this top part and do that at some point. But for now they sound good and I'm sure that the half inch difference isn't gonna make you know that huge of a difference as far as sound. I think they're pointed at a right angle thanks to the foam. Uh, you see the foam is sticking off a bit on either one of those. i would forgotten that they were gonna be angled but that's okay. Everything is really well balanced and solid. This one here does have a slight bit of wobble but that's just because of the the way the floor is and how one corner is sitting on a little bit of uh, the, the groove between tiles. I can, you know, I can put something in there to wedge that and shim it. And this one here, this one here, it's also a little bit wider too, so that helps. But this one here is pretty rock solid. You know, I don't know how jiggly professional monitor stands would be, but these are working really great. And I am really happy with them. And there will be a video at some point with sound. And here's how this kind of turned out back here. Um, so I do have easy access to the switch, easy access to my light switch, but the red cable you see on my screen is going to be for that. So that uh, power strip will be gone, the red cable will just go straight over, and then I'll probably use some glue dots or something to mount it to the desk uh, so it doesn't wiggle around a bit. But that's it for this video on um, making some uh, speaker stands. Yeah, you can do it out of PVC, and I did it this way because the, I needed a very, very specific fit. Uh, there were some CD stands that were made out of wood that would have been just the right height, but those were like, and size for it width-wise too, those were like $200. I wasn't spending $400 on my stands, I spent like $100 $50 maybe for these. You can definitely do it cheaper if you don't go out and buy red or other colored PVC, but I wanted red because my studio is going to be red. Oh, and I forgot one more thing. So I just needed to put my CD stack back and now everything is complete. So, um, yeah. I'm really glad for this audio upgrade. They sound a lot nicer than my, uh, Sun speakers, I'll have a video on that eventually because the sun speakers weren't bad except for going crackly sometimes. But these do sound much better and it looks nice. I just, yeah, I really like the setup. Um, so if you guys liked the video, leave a like down below. If you're new here, check out the variety of other stuff that I do. Building things isn't the main thing I do on this channel. Um, I want to do more short films and things, that's what I'm working towards. But currently, uh, there's a lot of Minecraft and some other projects and things happening slowly. And uh, if you do like the variety that you see, then subscribe. And I'll see you guys in whatever's next. Bye!